Hey, here we are. Happy Thursday. Hey, we had a great time last night. We were talking about the curse of poverty. So go back on Periscope and, and watch that if you get a chance. Today, I want to talk to you about how to break the poverty curse. How to break the poverty curse. The first thing you have to understand is that there is a poverty curse. There's a curse of poverty. When a little over, <clears throat> about probably about five years ago, four and a half, five years ago, <clears throat> Mary and I went through a very bad time, very hard time. We failed at a major, we had a major project, and it failed. It cost us a ton of money. And Afterwards, when it was all done, I was just literally in a rage over this. And I, I kept saying to her, I said, this should not be. This should not be. Now, I didn't blame anybody. I didn't blame God. I knew, I knew it was not God's fault. I knew that. I knew somewhere the problem was me. I knew that. I just didn't know how. I didn't know how. And I started crying out to the Lord. I said, Lord, this should not be. There, there, there's something wrong here. I mean, there is really something wrong in my life to have this happen to me. I'm telling you what, people. When you cry out to God, he will answer you. Call unto the Lord, and he will answer you. I'm telling you what, and he did. Did he ever? He showed me. He showed me what the problem was. And believe me, there was a huge problem. And the problem was found in Deuteronomy chapter 28, which is the curse of the law. And my problem was found mainly in verse 29. Now you can see how I got that marked up. Verse 29 says, And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropes in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Why hasn't God helped the people in Africa? Because the, most of the people in Africa have not cried out to God. Somebody just asked me that question. But, they, but you can tell, the missionaries will tell you that the places in Africa that have gotten a hold of the blessing and have gotten a hold of God live entirely different than the vast majority of the people, just like in this country. Amen. Now, let's get back to this. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled forever. Spoiled forever. That's a curse. That's, that's a curse that lasts forever. A curse that lasts forever. And the Lord showed me and, 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 and dropped it into my spirit that my father had been cursed by his father way back when, when my granddad, my granddad sold his farm in Catanning, Pennsylvania. He had a large farm, a very large farm. And he had a lot of people that worked for him. And they decided to way back to, to sell their farm. He just, after his wife died, my dad's mother, and somehow or another he blamed his dad for her death. But, but she just died. They didn't, you know, in those days, they didn't have the treatment that they do now. And uh, so he blamed him. And the two of them had a big falling out. But the truth of the matter is my dad didn't get along with anybody. So for him not to get along with his dad was no big deal. I mean, he just didn't get along with anybody. And so my, my granddad took the rest of his family and the money that they got from their farm, and they all went to California and bought a huge tract of land out there in the San Fernando Valley, out there where they do vegetable farms. And he started a huge truck farm out there because the land out there was dirt cheap. There was no irrigation. 
but irrigation was just beginning out there in the 30s. Just beginning. And they made millions of dollars. But he cursed my dad before he left. He apparently told my dad something to the effect that if you don't go with us, you'll never amount to anything. Now, I don't know the exact wordings of it. Had I known when my dad was still alive about this, I would have asked him. But he's not, he was not, but by the time I got a hold of this, he wasn't alive anymore. But I know that him and my granddad had a huge falling out. And my dad struggled. Now, he was very smart. He was a merchant marine officer, high-ranking officer, made a lot of money. But all the money that he made went right through him. <clears throat> and he died virtually with no money at all. And everything I tried to do failed. I struggled at everything I did. And, but I was smart, college educated, graduate school, even Bible college. But, and, and we were somewhat successful. But, every, but all of the money that we, we made, I lost $100,000 in a restaurant deal. We had a very successful restaurant, but I lost $100,000 in, in the process. Now, I'm, I'm being honest with you people. And I lost tens of thousands of dollars in other ventures. I went through a ton of money. I mean, I was rich and poor and rich and poor and rich and poor. Just every time I would get rich, I'd lose it all. The devil would steal it. That's the curse. That's the curse. There was a time when I was... 28, 29 years old, I never walked around with less than $1,000 in my pocket. I mean, that's, that's, that's something for a young guy, huh? But it all went away. The reason it went away was because the curse of poverty was working in my life. I'm telling you what, people, if the curse of poverty is working in your life, you're going to struggle at every point. You people come into our church and they're broke and they say, Pastor Jim, nothing has ever worked out and I can't keep a job and I get fired from this and fired from that. There's something going, believe me, it's not them. It's not them. I don't get after them and say, well, you need to change this and you need to change that. No, I deal with the problem. Four years ago, in June, this coming June, in two months will be four years I broke the curse of poverty in my life. And I'm telling you what, our finances have gone through the roof. Just up, 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 up. I'm telling you what, it has been absolutely amazing what has happened in our lives. We got people in our church now that I have got this blessing on them and you wouldn't believe how their finances have turned around. I've been speaking this blessing over my, over my church for 15, 16, 17 years. And I didn't even realize that I had the curse of the, of, the, of the law. The curse of poverty was actually working in my own life. But I was blessing the other people in my, in my church, and people were becoming millionaires. But I wasn't. But I broke the curse of poverty in my life. Poverty is a curse. If it's oppression of the devil, it's a curse, and it is subject to the name of Jesus. I'm telling you what, people. This is so simple, your heads will explode. So simple. Break the curse of law. What do you think? Keith Moore and Kenneth Copeland and Creflo Dollar and all those people, why do you think they're so successful? Because they keep the curse of poverty out of their lives. Every time anything flares up, they break it in Jesus' name. I'm telling you what, people, this is so easy. If you can't do this yourself, which a lot of people can't, you've got to be operating on a very high level with faith in the name of Jesus to do this. But I'm telling you what, we can do it for you. Or go to your pastor. Go to your pastor and ask him to break the curse of poverty in your life and see what he says. Most pastors will not even understand what you're talking about. But I do. And once that curse of poverty is broken in your life, I'm telling you what, if you just keep your mouth shut and go about your business, you will increase. And you will increase. And you will increase. And it sometimes starts out slow. I tell people this, you may not notice anything for six months, but stay with it. Stay with it.
because I'm telling you, God's word works. It works, it works, it works. It works, and I'm telling you, when it works in your life, I will be right there to say, I told you so, because it does. It does, it works. Kenneth Copeland didn't notice any difference in his life for 11 months. 11 months. But he knew that he was on the right track. And I'm telling you what, this blessing, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law so that the blessing of Abraham can come on the Gentiles. But the curse of the law has been allowed back in through people's words and through speaking curses and things like it was with my dad. There could have been a curse spoken over your family's finances 500 years ago and it will affect your life. It's still operating in your life. It could have been your granddad, your great granddad, your great grandmother, somewhere, somewhere, somebody spoke a curse and allowed a curse to get into your family. And I'm telling you what, it will affect your finances forever. It says here forever, but it can be broken in the name of Jesus. Go to my website, increasenow.com. I'm telling you what, we, we will break that curse of, all, of, of poverty in your life. I get companies turned around when I do this. I have literally had people come to me and say, Pastor Jim, my company is just, I am bleeding money out of my company. One, one woman, bless her heart, lost millions of dollars. She is now getting it all back. It's coming back to her. Big contracts are coming to her. Everything is coming to her. Her business is flourishing because I broke the curse of poverty in her life. I broke the curse of the law. The curse that somehow got in there and stripped her company and is stripped in the lives of God's people should not be. The curse of poverty. It's very real. It is in the, it's in the country of Haiti. It's in the continent of Africa. It's in the country of Guatemala. It's in the inner cities of this country. It's in Appalachia. It's in every poor family in this country has got the curse of poverty operating in their lives. <clears throat> you can drive around and you can see people who are struggling to make a living. And I'm telling you, the curse of poverty is working in their lives. But once it's broke, once it's broke, Within six months, a year, two, three years, everything changes. Because your natural inclination is to increase. All we got to do is get the devil out of your finances. Break the power of the curse over your checkbook. Break the power of the curse over your lives. And what you start, what you do will begin to prosper. You may not notice anything for several months. But I'm telling you what, you will prosper and it will be there. Hey, I'm almost out of time. Has this been good today? I'm telling you, this is the secret to success, is to break this curse, to get rid of this curse and watch everything start to turn around in your life. Go to my website, increasenow.com. If your pastor doesn't understand this, hook up with us. Hook up with me. I will break that curse of poverty in your life. I'm telling you what, I will get rid of that. I will get the blessing of God into your life and... I tell people this, two or three years from now, you cannot even imagine what is going to happen in your life. Curse of sickness causes sickness. I'll break that in your life, and it brings healing. Generational curses of sickness, heart disease, cancer, all that, we can break that in your life too, if that's going on in your family. One lady called me, there's a curse of muscular dystrophy in her family. We broke that. There, those people, her and her sister, and their offspring are going to heal from that awful disease because we broke that curse. We can break the curse of poverty in your life too. Call me today and let's get this started in your life. Amen. Go to increasenow.com. We will break the curse of poverty. Yeah, hey, was that good today? Go out there today. Make it a great day. And remember this. God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills. <laughs>